What is up everybody, this is JP representing JPFitnessPro.com. Again, like I said in my last video, if you guys want online training or in-person training, again, online training can be from anywhere, but if you want in-person training, I'm currently training at a self-made training facility in San Marcos, California. So you can go to my website, jpfitnesspro.com. I have a lot of links where you can text me, call me, or email me, um, and then we can uh, see about working together with some personal training. All right, today's video is gonna be about pull-up progression, and this video is for people who can't do that many pull-ups and want to do more pull-ups or for someone who can't do any pull-ups and just wants to be able to start with doing one pull-up. Um, I'm gonna go over some techniques you can do and things that you need to focus on if you wanna get better at doing pull-ups. Now let's start with group one. Group one is people who are extremely overweight or basically they're obese. And by that I mean is, even if you accommodate the lack of strength and the fact that they're overweight with like resistance bands or negative pull-ups or partner assisted pull-ups, then the group one people, that's still not enough for them to even get help with pulling themselves up to a, a bar. These types of people, even when you have a band assisting them or someone helping them, it's just, it's too hard for them to even pull and it's just not enough assistance. Again, there may, might be some bands out there that, you know, two, 300 pound bands that'll help them, but usually they're just gonna be so overweight and so maybe inexperienced in the gym that it's just so awkward for them that it just doesn't work. So for everyone, but for especially these types of people, I would recommend, again, especially for these types of people, you gotta start with your diet. You gotta have an intelligent caloric deficit to lose weight. You do that over time, you lose weight, it's e you have less weight to pull up to a bar and it's easier for you to start doing pull-ups. But the second thing I recommend for these group one types of people is working on a lat pull-down machine, okay? So for everything that I say in this video, for the group one people, just do a lat pull-down machine, okay? So don't do any type of different techniques for pull-ups until you lose some weight and the pull-ups start to get uh, a little bit easier or you feel yourself getting a lot stronger. So for those types of people, you may want to stick to lat pull downs, you know, lat pull down machine for like maybe three to six months until you lose some weight and then you get stronger. Now group two types of people is for people who are maybe a little overweight or maybe they're not overweight at all, but they can, they're still struggling to do pull-ups, but it's not so hard for them to maybe grab a bar and do some form of pull-up. So these types of people don't have to do a lat pull on, and I would actually recommend getting as much experience with on a bar as possible. Again, it's the principle of specificity. When you do what you're trying to get better at more often, you get better at it. So for these types of people and from everyone else in the past that group, uh, people who are stronger than that, these principles would apply to them. And then the group one people, when they lose weight and get stronger at lap pull downs, they can use these techniques. So what I would recommend for every group is to do some form of vert vertical pull three times a week. So some form of vertical pull, whatever that may be. Again, if you're doing a lap pull down or you're doing a pull ups, again, if you can get on a bar and you can at least have some strength to pull yourself to a bar, I recommend working with the bar as much as possible. So three times a week, a minimum of two. I strongly recommend you don't just do vertical pulls one time a week. You can, but it's gonna be just a lot slower rate of progression for you to do pull-ups. So I recommend doing it two or three times a week. So let's just assume you can do it three times a week. What I recommend is you having a high, like a higher repetition day, maybe like 16 plus reps, a medium repetition day, like six to 15 reps, and then a lower repetition day of one to five reps. So you can do that is by one, for example, the one to five reps is going to be, uh, pretty heavy pull-up so I mean a pretty hard pull-up so by that I mean let's just say you can't do that many pull-ups uh, if you use a weaker band like a like maybe a band that's 50 to 100 pounds of assistance then that's not gonna help you that much you, you may feel like the pull-ups are still hard but you'll probably be able to get a few so let's just assume I use this band to assist myself and I can only get four or five that would be on my first set this would be like one day out of the three days that I'm doing a vertical, vertical pull a week. Now, that may, again, it's not supposed to provide that much assistance. Now, some alternative methods for your heavy day or your hard day is to do, you have two other methods. You could do one, partner assisted pull-ups. You can come up to a bar, grab the bar, and have a partner spot you from behind and help you get some pull-ups. Again, it's gonna be pretty hard because people aren't gonna be able to spot you that much. Um, the third option for the hard day would be um, to do negatives, to do negative pull-ups. So again, what you do for a negative is you jump up 
to the bar and slowly let yourself down, or you can walk off a platform, like maybe you have a platform, get your chin up to the bar, jump off the platform and slowly let yourself down. So it would look like this. You would use your feet, jump up, and slowly let yourself down. You could do that for about, I'd say about three to five repetitions. So again, that would be your hard day. Now your medium day would be about six to 15 repetitions. So again, if you're someone who is not that bad at pull-ups but just wants to do more, your medium day could just be 10 negatives. That's fine. If negatives are too hard for you, you're not that strong, but you can do a few, that might be your hard day. Um, also, another technique is just to use a lighter band. So again, your medium day could be for six to 15 reps, you could just use a little bit stronger of a band so that you're able to get more repetition. So you wanna fall your 60, 50, six to 15 repetitions, you should be getting relatively close to failure. I wouldn't recommend going to failure on any of these days. The closest state of failure should be your heavy day. Um, and you can tell when you're getting close to failure is when you start to slow down. When you're not pulling yourself up to the bar fast, that's when you're starting to get really close to failure. So when you, your form starts to break down, just stop the set right then and there. Um, your heavy day should be closest to uh, failure as any of the days are gonna be. Now your third day is going to be a high repetition pull-up day, so 16 plus reps. Again, for the high repetition day, I would not recommend doing partner assisted and I would not recommend doing negatives. It's just, that's a lot of volume for uh, that much eccentric muscle damage. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, what I would recommend is just for this day, you could go to a lat pull down if you want, um, or you could just use a really strong band, you know, um, maybe even wrap two bands and put your feet through, you know. Again, the further the band stretches, the more it's going to help you. So if you put your knee in the band and do pull-ups like that, like putting your knee and doing pull-ups like that, what I would recommend is just putting your foot in the band because if your feet are extended, it's going to stretch the band out further, which means it's going to help you more. Or again, you could just wrap two bands around the bar. So that's what I would recommend. So again, you have a heavy day, a medium day, and a light day. And then for the people who are really overweight and aren't doing pull-ups, do the same thing with a lat pull-down. Also too, you can mix in various types of grips if you want. Some grips I would probably stay away from because it's just going to make it really difficult. It's going to be really close grip overhand pull-ups or really wide grip pull-ups, okay? So stick to kind of like, like, you know, no extremes. Don't jump to any extremes, but you can do chin-ups, neutral grip, uh, pull-ups if you have a neutral grip bar or neutral grip pull-downs with your palms facing each other or you can do chin-ups. Again, chin-ups for most people are going to be a little bit easier if you're not used to doing pull-ups and that would be palms facing you. So again, that's what I would recommend doing. Now the last thing to cover is deloads. Again, all these rules are going to vary between person to person. If I met you in person, I would give you specific things for you to follow uh, and when to take a deload and I can structure a program for you. But to help you generally, uh, I guess a general rule of thumb is maybe if you're working on pull-ups to do this for three to four weeks and then take a light week. And by light week is do the same thing you were doing, but just do less sets, so do less volume and uh, stop this every single set you do, stop it further from failure. So you should have at least five reps in the tank on every single set. So again, uh, so that will be your deal of the week so you can fully recover. Um, yep, so those rules uh, should help you with your pull-ups. You guys have any questions, comments? Please leave them down below, but I'll see you guys next time. Peace.